All right, first up on new, there is a coming soon. It is, uh, we liked it so much that we're going to stock it. Di yes. DigiKey Innovation Handbook. We featured this last week on the That's Ad right. MPI, and we liked it so much. We're like, we'd like to stock it. DigiKey said yes. So it's in as yeah. a coming soon. Of course, you can pick it up yeah. from DigiKey. Sign up so we know how many you get to. But Yeah. Next up. All right, next up. Uh, you know, actually, this is a uh, this is a funky thing. I got these motors um, from CarveX. Uh they contacted us and said, hey, we've got all these extra motors. Would you like them? We'll sell them to you at cost. And I was like, yeah, sure. You know, I'll, I'll take some off your hands. So these are NEMA 23s. Uh, these are nice, chonky, big motors. I think they're 2.8 amps and like maybe three ounce inches of torque. I don't remember exactly. Check the, check the data sheet uh, that we have linked from the product page. These are chunky stepper motors designed for CNCs. These are going to be great for uh, controlling something... Um, that's either CNC or you just want like a lot of torque. They come with a cable uh, here. As you can see, this is the X carve cable. So they come with a cable ready to go. You can plug it into here so you don't have to worry about uh, getting the connector for this uh, nice big wide pitch cable. It's very wide pitch. Um, it's bipolar, so it has four wires. Uh, nice big mounting plate. Uh, a GT2, I think it's a two millimeter pitch. Um, uh, pulley already attached to it so you can you don't have to worry about uh, if you want to kick this up to your CNC or something yeah it's designed for an X car but you can use it for anything you like and I thought these were just really nice strong inexpensive motors next up okay next up we've got our adorable custom woven cables this is a USB-C on one end a wonderful reversible USB-C on the other hand USB-A uh, I just I'm constantly using these kinds of cables. I want a cable that looks good. It wasn't just black because everything I own is black. I like a touch of color. So I got these purple and pink woven cables with really beautiful over molding. Uh, so these are my favorite okay. cables and now they're in the store. Next up. All right, we've got more touch pads. So you like a couple months ago, you said, let's get some like touch pads. We need and, these. Like, yeah, probably people making like, like I don't know. You, you cool, need these. Like Pi 400. If a computer like, can be Cyber anything, Dex. you still need a way to interact with the computer. Well, I like these panel mounts. So all these panel mount things is because like a lot of people are building projects with a Raspberry Pi and they want to have some sort of touch or mousing control. And it's really hard, like a keyboard, you know, we have a panel mount keyboard we'll show in a moment. Keyboards usually stay still, but mice are kind of like annoying because you have to have a surface for them. So these are all panel mounts. This is from like a, some laptop, um, but you know, it's adapted. You can just plug yeah. it into USB. Shows up as a mouse, has three buttons. It just works with any operating system. It's just a touchpad. It's even got the little scrolling thing oh. on the side. So this is a panel mountable touchpad. It's basically left over from some laptop thing, but it works great with any computer. Yeah, next up. Okay. You've got this glowing trackball. I kind of like trackballs. Trackballs are kind of big. We um, needed at least one trackball. Yes. Yeah, so let me see if I can grab this. Maybe I'll plug it in to show the glow. Hold on. I've got this over here. Okay. So it glows. The glowing doesn't is not affected by the rolling. It's not like it glows more or less. Um, it's panel mountable. If you open it up, there's LEDs inside, and like if you really wanted to, you could change the color. But it glows like a bluish white color. Um, but it's just like your kind of standard video game or you know controller trackball. Okay. Works pretty well. And again, I really like anything that has panel mounts. Anything that you can like screw this down, attach it permanently. To your surface. All right, next zoom, up. Zoom, zoom, zoom. We have the combination of something you might need. For yeah, so this a is a full sized keyboard. So it's, it's big, it's a big keyboard, um, but it's again, it's panel mountable. You can attach it to something permanent, and it's got that handy trackpad on the side uh, with the two buttons. It's simple but effective. I mean, yeah. you know, you want a keyboard, you want a trackpad. We have them, but they're really small and they're like wireless. This is the wired version. Um, that can be attached permanently and it's full size. So it's nice and comfortable. Yep. Uh, I think this would be good. You know, these people are always making um, products or like uh, kiosks with our hardware, with a Raspberry Pi or a BeagleBone. And this would make a great accessory to let people control it with a mouse attached. Next up. Okay. This is something I personally wanted. It's a STEM QT cable, right? So it plugs into any of our STEM QT or quick boards. And on the end, it's got these micro clips, right? And these, this is a good idea. these are great. These hooks, 
They're not the ultra high end, super expensive ones that you get on your $300 lodge canalizer. These are the ones you get on your like $25 lodge canalizer. That said, they work perfectly fine. You can attach to dips, you can attach to, as you can see, uh, um, breakout boards, wires, headers, uh, SOICs, not TQFPs or you know, obviously anything with wire, you know, that is leadless, but SOPs or SOICs, yes. So even something on like a motherboard, you can, like, if you can attach to some points, you can maybe get into that I squared C there. Um, so let me show this. I was doing this on my IMPI demo. So maybe I can zoom in and show how yeah, handy. I was just like, tied all this together. I was like, put this in stock because I need this for the demo tonight. Um, so this is the hook. Yeah. And you can see it's got this little, little like, little hooky hooky yeah. that can grab in. So you can grab onto, like, all sorts of stuff. And um, another nice thing I like about it compared to alligator clips is once it's clipped on, it doesn't have a big exposure. Like, there isn't a big space like alligator clips are so chunky, they're good, but like there's a lot of like, oops, like they're touching. This, uh, you know, it really hides, the hook hides into the body quite well. And then, you know, like this, and then, um, look, I got these uh, with a little bit of epoxy glue on them so that they are mechanically more secure. I got paid a little bit extra to get those. So worth it. Love this. Wonderful. Grabby, grabby. All right. Grabby hook. Next up, the star of the show tonight, besides you, Lady Ada, the community, our customers, our team here at Adafruit is? More STEMIQT boards. Okay, so we're getting back on the STEMIQT train. Uh, this week, this is one actually from a uh, before uh, March of last year, and it was one of the things that sort of fell off the uh, new products train, but we're, we're getting back to some of these oldies but goodies. So this is a uh, 24C... 32 EE prom. It's a 32 kilobit EE prom, which is four kilobytes of data in EE prom format. I like EE prom because one, it's I squared C, so it's really easy to connect, supported by you know any microcontroller, microcomputer. Um, you know, four kilobytes is not a lot, but it's enough to store your configuration data. You know, a key, a MAC address, a calibration. Uh, username, you know, display settings, what have you, um, over I squared C. And again, these EEPROMs are so common, they're used by like a lot. We actually originally stocked these because we use this part in our Raspberry Pi hats because uh, they are used to you know, configure the uh, device tree overlay. But this is very handy if you ever want to add EEPROM to any of your um, products. Uh, a lot of microcontrollers that are like simpler, like the AVRs and PICs, have built in. EEPROM, but a lot of the Cortexes I'm noticing don't. Um, but if you still need a little bit of EEPROM data to sort of configuration, you just plug this in, you know, and, and there you go. So it's uh, it's a standard 24C or 24LC. It's a, it's a totally standard way of using EEPROM. Uh, you can connect up to eight on the single bus because you can configure the um, address using jumpers on the bottom. And uh, we've got an Arduino library and uh, a CircuitPython library coming out shortly that'll let you easily address them. Another nice thing about the EEPROM, you can write one byte at a time. Uh, you don't have to do page erase or page write or caching or buffering. Each byte, you know, takes a millisecond to write, but you can write them one at a time. And that's new products.